Hi guys, my name is Marcel and welcome! Today you're going to learn how to draw manga, like a sir. In this video I'll show you how I drew my manga pages, from the very very beginning to the very very end. I'll show you what you need and how I did it. Also, if you want to read my manga series Myth, you can, because the very first volume is now available in English. Go ahead and visit my website for more. Actually, I wanted to make a video about how to draw fight scenes, but then I remembered maybe it would be a good idea if you first knew how to draw a comic book or a manga page and then I'd show you how to draw a fight scene. That order makes a lot more sense. Maybe I can even make a whole series out of this, like videos about how to draw fight scenes, how paneling and page composition works and so on. A whole series about making manga and or comics. But that would be pretty damn time consuming, that's why I'm only going to make this video series if you people are actually interested in this. So, if enough people watch this video, I'll gladly make another part. So, please support this video so that a lot of other people see this video as well. And don't forget to subscribe so you can watch my other videos that I will upload about making manga and drawing. Well then, let's start where you usually start. That's right, at the beginning. Let's go! When making a manga page you need to have some things prepared, like for example a story and the characters. But remember this video is only about how to draw a manga page, character designs maybe for another video. Anyways, I didn't write this story, I had a story writer for that. So Toby, my story writer, usually sent me a whole chapter he's written. And that includes dialogue, description for visuals, spelling errors. Now when you have your story ready, you don't immediately go ahead and draw your manga page. No professional does that. At first you're drawing a storyboard. You know, just like I showed you in my last videos. You basically do that by drawing these thumbnail sketches that I've been showing you previously. That way you can always change something around. You can plan ahead what text goes where and so on. If you were to draw the entire manga page in advance and then you'd notice that maybe a speech bubble is placed the wrong way or a panel should be on another page, then it's too late because you've already put in the effort. And believe me, this happens way more often than you think. I've rearranged and changed a lot over these six years where I've drawn the series and I was glad I had a storyboard and thumbnail sketches where the changes could be done very quickly. Even professionals like Ichiro Oda do that, so this method is legit. And I'm also kinda glad they look just as rough as mine do. <laughs> Don't worry if your storyboard looks rough, the most important thing is that you yourself are able to recognize this visual crime against the Geneva Convention since you're the one who needs to use it later on. Now that you have everything planned out, let's draw the actual page. There are two mistakes you need to avoid. Firstly, keep the printing area in mind. You ever noticed how you cannot read stuff that's further towards the middle in the book? Yeah, that's exactly why you keep some space there so your characters won't look like their parents share the same surname. And secondly, don't draw your pages too close to the edge. So here you have three areas. An area that's probably not going to make it in the book because it's cut off. Then you have an area that could be hard to read because of said reasons. And then you have a safe area that's completely safe to draw in. And yes, that's also the same reason why this special manga or comic book paper has rulers printed on it. Firstly, because it's easier to draw panels on it. And secondly, because you have some zones already marked out. Speaking of materials, for sketching out a manga page, you can basically use a plain old pencil, an eraser and some kind of ruler you like. Additionally, I also like to use a mechanical pen as well as an eraser pen, because especially for backgrounds, you need to work detailed. And because I can already see some people asking if you want to know where to get this exact comic book paper or my other art supplies, they are all listed on drawlikeasur.com slash materials. So just take a look there before you're asking about my art supplies. Now when you sketch out your manga page, you basically just have to copy your storyboard one by one. So I would advise you not to draw your storyboard half-heartedly, the more thought you put into this, the better your finished page is going to be. If you plan ahead while drawing your storyboard on how your background's gonna look, what characters will be having what kind of expression and so on, you can just turn off your head and draw. Now this is just a personal tip from me to you, but don't worry about your sketch looking messy or untidy. After all, this isn't a finished page, because Next, you're gonna need some inking. <laughs> okay, you gotta admit, that was a pretty smooth transition. 
I have not made a video on inking yet, but here's the synopsis. Comic book and especially manga artists mostly use pen nibs and ink instead of liners. That's because A, liners fade when you erase over them, and B, no liner out there can beat the detailed stroke of a Maru pen. Uh, but where do I get a Maru pen from? Uh, 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 uh. I, oh yeah, right. Now shut the f- Anyway, the most common nibs are G Pen, Maru Pen, and Tama Pen. But uh, since the G Pen is an all rounder, you can basically only use this one for starters. When it now comes to inking the page, I personally prefer to draw the panel outlines first and then draw the characters into them. I guess I'm an oddball here since everyone else seems to be doing it the other way around. Again, this just comes down to preference. When it comes to inking, you can ink in your very own style. Back then in my very first volume I liked to scribble a lot, where at the later volumes I decided to do things a lot cleaner. There isn't a better or worse method, this only comes down to preference. And in case you made some happy, happy accidents. accidents, you can use things like whiteout to take care of that. Now all that's left is to take care of grayscales, like for example shading. Traditionally you do this with screen tones, which is a film you can buy online by taking another mortgage. You apply this to your drawings in order to make them darker, it has these funny little dots on it, it's tedious as hell and overpriced and still people make some absolutely gorgeous artwork with it. I however only do this on special occasions, that's why at this point I'm scanning my manga pages and do this stuff with my computer. And for scanning you need a... Yes, a scanner. And in case you want to know my settings, the only thing you need to know is that you gotta scan with 600 dpi resolution. Everything else I leave unchanged. Now on your computer you can edit your pages by, for example, pumping up your contrast and add screen tones if you want. You can do this with Photoshop or GIMP or pretty much every other software you like. I'm not going into detail here because editing your manga pages on your PC can make for a complete video on itself. And also I'm adding text of course, but again, you can do this with basically every other software. And that's basically the gist of how I made my manga pages. If you still need some help with drawing these manga pages, I already have a lot of tutorials uploaded. From drawing people to drawing clothes all the way to drawing perspective, just check out my channel, there's a lot of it already. Like I said, if this video does well, I'll gladly make another part. Thank you very much for watching and a special thanks goes out to all of my patrons. Well then, my name's Marcel and I'll see you guys very soon. Goodbye.